Slavica in Crown Point, Indiana. Uh, describe the first time you ever performed music in front of others. Both of you guys. Oh, wow. Uh, I think I was probably 12 or 13 years old, you know, and it was uh, uh, in front of just a gang of neighborhood kids at a party. You know, that was pretty amazing. What about you, Robin? From what I understand, I started in the bathtub. When I, was, when I was a wee young child, although I can't attest to it myself. I don't remember back that far. But how's everybody doing, by the way? You guys had a good time? Right? Not it's been man. really interesting. Yeah, it sure has, man. It sure has. Okay. All right, All right. Misty Brewer from Berea, Kentucky. Are what you here? Are, are these people here? They're all here. Oh, wow. Hi. <laughs> Do you want to know the uh, most memorable moment of your goo career? Uh, wow. It would probably be, aside from this cruise, Probably, um, probably, wow, I don't know, the first time that we, I actually it's heard this on the radio, um, you know, with a song that we've written, that was a pretty phenomenal feeling. Yeah, I remember after we had a big song, we got to play the uh, arena in our hometown that I saw Kiss and Cheap Trek in and stuff like that, and I think... That sort of like blew my mind. So I think that moment probably for me was pretty huge. Sherry Smith from Sherry Smith Morrison. Wants to know who's your musical idols? Um, gosh, I like guys like uh, Paul Westerberg, uh, Peter Gabriel. Uh, gosh, who else? I mean, there's so many. There's so many people that I really like. Kiss. Diana from Union, New Jersey wants to know uh, what is your current favorite song that isn't one of yours? That isn't one of ours. I can't think one of one. <laughs> we hear our songs every single day, so yeah. they're ingrained. Um, right now? Right now, what do I really like? I mean, I, you know, I, I really like um, that song, Royals. I love that song. God. It's a great song, what can I say? It's a really good song. Um, Alright, Joyce from DC wants to know, if you could see anyone in concert, dead or alive, who would it be? Dead or alive. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't played in a while. <laughs> Here. Um, wow, dead or alive. Or at any point in their career? Yeah. Okay, I think I'd like to maybe see the Rolling Stones in 72. Yeah, or, or the Who in 73. Or the Clash in 79. Or all of them the same day. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, Nathan from Oakdale, California uh, wants to know what inspired you to write Rebel Beat? Um, you know what? I was um, I was walking down the street in New York, and uh, there was a street blocked off, and they were having a party, a, a block party on this street, and uh, it was always this, this very sort of interesting kind of Latin feel to the music that was playing. The street was packed. There were people everywhere. It was just at, I was standing on the outside looking at it, and it, at once it made me really happy, but on the other hand, I felt um, I was. I got this really longing feeling to want to be part of it. So I, I was walking up to the studio and this melody started going into my head and then we just put it together from there. All right, Abby from Marion, uh, Virginia wants to know, what is one thing you wish someone had told you about being in the music industry before you entered it? Get a lawyer. And don't think just because a girl says she likes your band that she wants to sleep with you. <laughs> Those are the two things I wish I had known. A thing, really? Not one thing, man. Wait, and I just, just want to make this clear. <laughs> We've done this in getting a lawyer perfectly. <laughs> no, but getting a lawyer has nothing to do with the other part of the thing. <laughs> Okay, so, just let's move back there. 
All right, Christy from San Antonio, Texas. Wants to know a question for Robbie. How hard has it been to tour this year with a toddler at home? Uh, does anybody have a toddler at home? It's pretty tough having a toddler at home, too, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's, it's easy for him. He's not there. <laughs> this becomes a little bit more vacation-like. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I mean, of, of, yeah, I mean, of course it's tough, but, you know, uh, you know, we play on Skype every morning, and, and then when I come home, uh, you know, it's all that much more awesome. So, you know, it's great. And she gets to, she gets to come out with us, and she's amazing. Yeah, she drives around on the bus. <laughs> so it's really cool. That's a change. <laughs> all right, Terry from Buffalo, New York. Uh-oh. Where is she? She must be at the bar. Uh, Terry wants to know, what, is, do you, what do you miss most about Buffalo? What do you miss the least? Uh, what do I miss most about Buffalo? I miss my friends that I had there. Um, and what do I miss least? Probably February. That's, yeah. I live there right now, and, and uh, I lived out in the West Coast for a long time. John and I both lived out that way. And uh, I love living in Buffalo, but uh, the thing that I miss the most are the uh, Korean restaurants that, that are open 24 hours that you can get in Los Angeles. I think that that's what I miss the most. All right, Sharon from Marion, Virginia wants to know, who makes you guys starstruck? Rob Thomas. <laughs> He's my man crush. <laughs> Do you want to know how to pander to an audience or what? <laughs> there are a lot of worse guys I could like. We saw we saw Al Sharpton the other day, and I was a little starstruck. I did, yeah. I was a, um, who really made me starstruck? I, you know, nobody. I, because I really don't give a shit who you are. I just, no, I, I don't. Sorry. Question. Bobby, what is the official number of Pez dispensers you own? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> this is embarrassing. Uh, I don't, probably about 3,000, maybe? Yeah. It's not like collecting Ferraris or anything, you know? Like they're like two bucks or something. But anyway, yeah, I love those little bastards. All right, Michelle from Des Moines wants to know, what is one of your favorite moments that, since you've been on this tour with Matchbox? Rob? <laughs> Developing a man crush on Rob. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Kyle at first, but... He was a little standoffish. <laughs> no, I mean, for real, we had, like, an amazing, amazing, amazing summer with Matchbox. I don't know if any of you guys are out for me. Uh, that was... That was probably the most fun we've ever had on a tour. You know, it's just, it was amazing. Yeah, you guys so, were all amazing. It was really a lot of fun. So I think, I, I think just being able to do this whole thing again is pretty amazing. You know? yeah, so. Love you! Question for Robbie. I know you've done some work with Compass House in Buffalo, New York, and I'm from Buffalo and familiar with them. Uh, how did you get involved? That's from Terry Lyman in. Buffalo, New York. Yeah, we've actually, you know, the band's done a bunch of stuff with uh, Compass House over the years. There's, there's a great website called Absolute Goo that, that uh, yeah, some of you might know that. Yeah, they, they uh, run a big auction every year and we uh, have raised a whole ton of money for them. And they do great things for, uh, uh, for women in Western New York where we're from. So, yeah. Uh, Chris Chavez from Stockton, California. Wants to know, over the years in the business, have you acquired any superstitions or adapted any routines before shows? Um, no, just make sure that you're prepared uh, for the show. You, know, you do a lot of, I like, do vocal warm-ups and things like that. And, uh, you know, just, just, just don't get drunk. That's right. <laughs> Stay sober when you play. <laughs> I have to sing from that side of the stage. I can't sing from that side of the stage for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why. That's, I've developed that over 28 years. 
Uh, Joni from Downey, Idaho wants to know if you were able to be any person in history for one day, who would it be? And why? I'm not saying <laughs> Rob Thomas. Rob Thomas. Rob Thomas. <laughs> On his cruise. On his... Yes. <laughs> no, um... Wow, who would I want to be? I don't know. You know, I was thinking about it. I might want to be Pookie on this cruise, actually. <laughs> and that way we could still, you know. What? That way we could still go play a show. You could be Rob, I could be Pookie. There you go. Uh, Sarah from Grinnell, Iowa wants to know, with the holidays coming up, what's your favorite Christmas tradition? Um, I bought Making myself a, a little train to put under my tree. Because I always wanted one when I was a kid, and I finally went and got myself one. So, over the past couple of years, I put this train down and scared the shit out of the cat. <laughs> uh, Sarah from Grinnell, Iowa wants to know, if you could have lived or grew up in another time, when would it have been? Wow. Uh, grown up or lived, like been, how old? How old am I? 22. 22? Uh, 1968. <laughs> I think that's what I would do. Yeah, it wouldn't be so bad. Question for Robbie. Why barefoot at the shoe, at the shows? And what kind of shoes do you like to wear? That's from Kristen in McAdoo, Pennsylvania. I prefer to wear no shoes. Ever. But uh, I'm from Buffalo, and that's unreasonable. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know, because... Uh, because by nature I'm clumsy, and uh, removing the shoes from the equation kind of makes it that much safer. For me. That's all. No. All right, Dawn from uh, Mayetta, New Jersey. So, out of all the places you've been to to do concerts, do you have a favorite? Um, I mean, there's a lot of great places. I love playing at Jones Beach. I love Red Rocks, I love that place, that's great. Um, any place in Chicago is great to play. Yeah. That's, you know. I, wherever, actually, wherever the room is full, that's fine with me. Uh, both you guys, uh, Sharon from Marion, Virginia wants to know, uh, name something on your bucket list you haven't done yet. Gone on a cruise. No, we really haven't. This is our first cruise, so I guess I can scratch that one off. Um, wow, on my bucket list. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't had a kid yet, so. so Johnny! Uh, Alright, Chris Chavez from Stockton, California wants to know. Is there a song that you know has been on the set list because it's a fan favorite, but you would love to take a break from playing? Oh, wow. Well, I'm pretty happy that, that we get, you know, I mean, that people still come to see us play, so, so um, I'm into playing whatever I'm into playing. Yeah. Uh, question for John. Yeah. What's the biggest change in your life in the last 10 years? That's from Jamie in Clearwater, Florida. Yeah. The biggest change in my life? Wow. Probably, you know, I, probably getting married. That was pretty, that was pretty like, wham, the door was just closed. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way, I mean that in a good way. Because of YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Best part about this ship is that it, it's nearly impossible to use the internet. Okay. Yeah. Alright, Valerie from Milo, Maine, <laughs> wherever. Valerie Robertson. There she is. Alright, she wants to know a question for John. Did you do anything special for your birthday, or is this more excitement than any one person can handle? I was actually on an airplane flying here on my birthday. So, well, not here, but to Miami to come and do this. And uh, that's fine. I don't really care about my birthday. No one saying you happy birthday? Yes, my friends did. Thanks. Thank you.
Thank you. I gotta tell you what though, the worst people in the world that will ever sing happy birthday are musicians. <laughs> They're just like, hmm, that much too cool. <laughs> All right, Carolyn from Streetsboro, Ohio wants to know a question. Question for John. Yes. I know you like to read. Has what you read influenced your songwriting, and if so, in what ways? A lot of it. A lot of it. You know, sometimes, sometimes. Uh, I mean, I love to read poetry, and uh, who? Uh, well, Rumi and uh, Pablo Neruda. Uh, I like Jim Carroll. I like. Um, I just, you know, I just. I never read it in my life, but I started reading Allen Ginsberg, and I was like, wow, this is really amazing. Um, I, I tried to stay away from, you know. Uh, John Berryman, I like a lot, and uh, I tried to stay away from the really popular guys, but uh, but yeah, it definitely has an influence on me, and um, you know, there's there's some I don't want to sound like there's some philosophy that I've read that sort of sort of really dug into my dug into my heart, and uh, you know, there's a lot of things. I mean, it's a lot of a lot of um, what I read about is what I see things. Things that people write to me, like every day I get letters from people, you know, when we play shows, and some of them are really, really moving, really intense. So I, I uh, you know, I relate to what people say to us, and, and, and I'm really grateful that our music is able to be a little tiny part of people's lives, even if it's only for three minutes. So thank you for that. All right, question for Robbie. Uh, what are your three favorite movies? That's from Dan uh, Jamie Dano in Clearwater, Florida. Three favorite movies. Let's see. Uh, the Poseidon Adventure. Uh, <laughs> yeah? Oh, man. Cabin Boy. Cabin Boy. And, uh, this is Robin the Poop Dead. Titanic! <laughs> Nice! <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. It's just sort of a nautical theme here. Alright, Christy from San Antonio, Texas wants to know, will there be another single released from Magnetic? And if so, can you tell us which track? Um, yeah, there probably will be, but I don't know. I don't know what song. Because we, um... Bulletproof Angel! A lot of times the... The geniuses at the record company figured that out. So. But, uh, you know, hopefully something soon enough. Yeah. Call your local radio stations. <laughs> well, I don't know why. But, but, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joni from Downey, Idaho wants to know What is something you still haven't done together as a band that you would still like to accomplish? Um, wow. I don't know. We've done a lot of really amazing things. I think, uh, I think, um, I don't know. What do you want to do? We never done Saturday Night Live. Yeah. 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 We've never done that. Yeah. And uh, we, were just, we were just in the studio. We had lunch there the other day. But uh, I don't think they taped it. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I mean, we've done a lot of great... I mean, we've done amazing things, but for some reason that one's always eluded us. So, uh, I'd love to do that sometime. Even though maybe nobody watches it anymore. I don't even know. Yeah? All right. All right. Anthony, all the way from Northwood, uh, Australia. All right. <laughs> Wants to know, would you play smaller, more intimate venues again with less emphasis on radio songs? Would, would we do that? Yes, play smaller venues. Yeah, sure, we would do that. You know, we would do all sorts of. No one says. I mean, no one's asked us, and you know, that's a situation you don't want to be forced into. You know, but uh, but yeah, I would love to do that. Uh, Deborah from Bradenton, Florida, wants to know uh, where did you play your first big concert? Probably in Buffalo. Yeah, Probably yeah, played sure. our very first really biggest concert that we've done has been in Buffalo, on our own. You know. Randall Slavin from Hollywood, California wants to know. Okay. <laughs> what was the first concert you guys ever saw? Uh, Van Halen. What year? 79. 1980, I think. 1980? Yeah. I saw uh, 
a guy named Todd Rundgren. Yeah, uh, in a place called Chestnut Ridge Park in Buffalo when I was a little kid. All right, now Jim and Sue from Aurora, Ohio wants to know where the hell can we get more goo wine? You know what, that was really, really weird. That, um, I don't know, that just was out for a little while. Yeah, yeah, they did some, there were some charity, some, ch some yeah. charity bottles made, you know, that benefited Compass House, actually. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's very, very limited run, I guess. Curtis from Peoria wants to know, what or who has been your biggest influence on your music? And also, who has been your biggest musical influence? <laughs> what and who? Okay. What? I mean, um, you know, everyday life is a huge influence on your music. And uh, who, it's whoever you run into that actually sticks in your brain. So, that's that. Uh, Kathleen Baker from Center Reach, New York. I think she's right up there. Hello. She wants to know, how do you decide what venues you're playing on tour? How do you decide on what venues to play while you're planning a tour? Who decides um, that? We have, uh, we have people who uh, do that for us. We're just like, just make sure it's full. You know, so, wherever we, always Jones Beach. Well, Jones Beach is just, that's just, that's the classic venue. So, we we'll always do that. Yeah, I mean, that whole side of the business is sort of like seeing sausage being made, man. It's messy, and you don't want to know what, what really goes on. But in general, it's, uh, you know, there's places we love to play, and we try to get back to those places if we can, for sure. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Katrina All right. Morales from Gilbert, Arizona wants to know, do you have any stories about how the title of an album or a song came to be that they don't know? Well, like Magnetic. Would that, How did that come to be? Um, my manager called me on the telephone, and uh, we named our last record something for the rest of us, which was way too long. And uh, he said, you need a title for the album, make it one word. And then I just said, magnetic. And then he was like, all right, that's cool. And that was the end of it. We tend to work under deadlines, you know? You got 20 minutes. Yeah, come up with an album name. Took us six months to make the album, but we were only in the studio for the last week of it. So, it's that kind of thing. 